2020 is set to be the year when U.S. space tourism takes flight with both high-profile companies and upstarts looking to launch space tourists to infinity and beyond. This month, we're diving into some of the companies looking to cash in. Yahoo Finance's Inez Ferre has more, focusing today on Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic was started by Sir Richard Branson and made headlines last year when it went public. It became the first space tourism company to ever trade on the New York Stock Exchange. The listing was possible by merging with a special acquisition company started by venture capitalist and former Facebook executive Chamat Palyapatiya. Virgin Galactic's first goal is to offer suborbital flights to space tourists. That means it will launch humans about 51 miles above Earth, enough to experience weightlessness for about six minutes and see the curvature of the planet before re-entering the atmosphere and landing back on Earth. The cost is a whopping $250,000 for a 90-minute journey, or about $42,000 for those six minutes of weightlessness. The company says it may increase its prices substantially for the first commercial flights, and Sir Richard Branson has said he will be on the first one. Now, space travel, as we know, can be a life and death endeavor. It's something that Virgin Galactic knows all too well. Back in 2014, the company's Spaceship Two rocket broke up and crashed during a test flight, killing one crew member and seriously injuring another. Virgin Galactic already has more than 600 reservations and hopes to begin commercial operations this year. Also on the calendar, becoming profitable by 2021, as well as bringing down the cost for travelers. The danger of us saying nobody will buy and they'll wait 20 years for that. But I think, you know, if we, you know, if we have 20 or 30 spaceships, which I think we will, you know, in 20 years time, um, uh, the, the price will come down dramatically. The company's phase three, though, will be point to point hypersonic travel. Boeing recently invested $20 million in Virgin Galactic, and analysts like Adam Jonas at Morgan Stanley are banking on the more long-term upside potential for Virgin Galactic, starting with space travel, but ultimately disrupting the air travel industry with hypersonic point-to-point -point air travel. So let's dive into Virgin Galactic space ambitions. Anybody signing up? We're going to get their earnings, by the way, on the 25th. But anybody, anybody want to take a flight? I would not want to be on one of the first ones, let's say. Um, but I mean, I think what's incredible about the stock is how much it has risen given the fundamentals right now. And I think because there are no public comparables, SpaceX isn't publicly traded, Blue Origin isn't publicly traded, it just makes it very difficult for analysts to actually value this. And that's why we've seen this speculative run up of 50 plus percent in the past couple months. Yeah, no, great point. I mean, when we talk about the disconnect between price and fundamentals with Tesla, you know, this is uh, on a whole nother wavelength, literally. Uh, and when we the other element here is this is truly a moonshot technology mm -hmm. in every way, shape or form. Um, personally, I'm going to hold off on signing up to answer your question directly. But what's interesting here is the potential, though, is absolutely huge if they can get these costs down. And do I mean, eventually, presumably, they'll be able to get the cost down. The question is what happens to these investments and these companies in the meantime, right, if you're going to put your money in one of these things. Yeah, if you're talking about a moonshot technology, whether you're literally trying to go to the moon in some way, shape, or form, or doing something which is maybe more tangible, mm -hmm. the potential for failure is massive. Uh, and the profitability comment about 2021 is extremely aggressive. You know, uh, I, I actually would expect that to get pushed out far into the future, uh, even if the potential for the scaling is there. Back in around, was it 2010, when we have essentially shut down NASA's launch capabilities, it was with the intent of private companies replacing Correct. the government. We now have that in play. And, and as you heard in, uh, in Ez's report, Virgin Galactic, yeah, they talk about the tourism where you're basically going up and not quite into orbit, but then come back down. But it's really about getting from here to Tokyo in a matter of a few hours as opposed to 14 to 15 hours. That, yeah, exactly. That's quite the yeah, exactly. I mean, that's where the disruption comes in, right? When we think about technologies closer, closer to Earth, like Hyperloop, um, uh, the technologies that could be put in place here to actually truly disrupt kind of tourism as we know. That's, why I think, why investors have dove in uh, with such fervor in a short period of time. Mm. Well, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We're going to be talking about our next entrance in our Space Month coverage. It's Boeing.